right, we're concluding our series with honor, and I don't know about you, but it's been a great reminder, and I've also learned some things through this process. It's amazing how you can read the Bible all your life, and while you read it every day, you find something new, another inf information uh, that brings about transformation. We've been talking about the very first week, we spoke about that no authority is there except that God has established. And it shows here, show proper respect to everyone, love the brotherhood of believers, which would be each other, and fear God and honor the king. And it also says this, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Love, honor one another above yourselves. And so this whole thing is about honoring and that when we honor what God has honored, he'll bring honor upon us. You know, Jesus uh, met a centurion, and his servant was sick, and he said, please come to my servant, and he says, hey, Jesus, you don't even have to come. Just, just say the word. I'm a man of authority. He began to explain how there's an authority structure, and Jesus goes, this guy's got it. He understands what's going on. And so we've been given the illustration about how this is like a covering, that if you honor the covering, you get the benefit of the covering. And so when we honor um, what God honors, he honors us, and we receive more blessing in our lives. I don't know about you. I could get all the help I can get, and blessing is having God's favor. And so we want to make sure we honor the covering that God has given us. That starts at the home, by the way, honoring your parents. And we talk about that the second week, honor in the house and how we're supposed to honor our parents and how important that is. We also mentioned the fact that if we do not honor the authority structure that God has given us, what happens is we literally cut holes in our honor covering. And as a result of that, we end up hurting ourselves. How good would this be in a rainstorm right now? It wouldn't do very much for me. Why? Because there's poked holes in it. And when we show dishonor to people and show honor to God, we be literally poke holes. And I believe part of the reason why we're experiencing what we're experiencing today in our society is because we've become a society that dishonors, dishonors each other. It's really a part of our culture. And we should be counterculture to that. We should be shining forth honor. We also mentioned last week, the third week of our series is this, honoring the dishonorable. Remember that? We talked about that. How do you honor the dishonorable? And then you realize something is that all of us were dishonorable, yet God honored us while we were yet sinners. While we were yet dishonorable, Christ came for us. And if we're going to be what Christ has called us to be, Jesus has called us to be, we're called to be Jesus. I don't know if you realize this. I want to set a little, a little stage here for a moment. Is this. Jesus came as a prototype of what you and I are called to be. You see, what happened was the first Adam in, in the garden, he messed up and he represented all humanity. And as a result, Christ, Jesus, is called the second Adam that makes right what the first Adam blew it with. And the amazing thing is this, is that Jesus emptied himself of all his godly power and all his strength, handed it over, and became one of us and lived in a human body, subjected himself to his parents. He was under their covering. He honored his parents for over 30, 30 years. He honored the religious systems of his day. He honored the work ethic of his day. The Bible says he grew up with favor with both man and God. And so Jesus understood that, and he was basically the second Adam. Now, Jesus, everything he did, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit through direct communication with God. And he basically says that, as the Father sent me, so I send you. So we are the continuation of the body of Christ on the planet of earth. So if we want to understand about honor, we need to understand Jesus, which we're going to get into a lot today. So, honoring the dishonorable. And today is this. There's only one, honoring the only and one judge. Honoring the only and one judge, which is God. Today there's a big movement, say, don't judge me, don't tell anyone what they're supposed to do, and judge not. We hear that all the time, don't we? But the funny thing is, people that say judge not are judging us, for having a standard. So you can't get away from it. But here, don't judge. Don't judge anybody. You know, you hear that constantly. And this is something we hear all the time. And you know, I did a little test on myself. And I wanted to see how much do I judge people and circumstances. And this is what I found. And I, I thought maybe I'm not really a judgmental person too bad. But I, I kept stock and, and kept a tally, if you will, in my mind 
uh, to see if I was wrong. And, and I just found out that judging others is fun. It really is. It's a lot of fun to go around and judge people, especially at a shopping mall or beach or I can't believe they're wearing that and looking like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sit there, you go to the mall, you judge somebody, you're, you're driving. And have you noticed that if someone's going slower than you, they're an idiot? If someone's going faster than you, they're a maniac? <laughs> right? Sit there, you judge people. I, I can't believe they do this. I can't believe they do that. We watch television. We judge what's going on in our country. We judge our president. We judge other people. We judge people at work. Who does he think he, she is? Or who does he think he is? I can't believe they do this and the other. It's fun. And I, I find that I'll even, you know, judge my kids. How could you do that? Don't you care about us? How could you leave your, 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 your uh, how could you spill that orange juice over the brand new uh, tablecloth we just got out of the washing machine? And what's wrong? And you start judging the children. You start judging each other. I can't believe the person didn't say this to me. And I start judging that. And it just, it's so easy to do that. And maybe someone's moody. I can't believe you're so moody. There was a number, there was a period of, there was one time we were eating at a place uh, I'd rather not talk about because I don't think it's as, as friendly as it should be. <laughs> And I'm judging right now. And the waitress, I mean, she had an attitude. I mean, for me, if I'm going to go out and spend money and eat, I want to have a good experience. And this waitress was like throwing the food down and just being, just being nasty. I'm like, what does she think she's, you know, I started getting irritated with her. This is a number of years ago. We had a dear friend of us named Juan. And the next thing you know, he, he, I was getting agitated with her. I was embarrassed because we had a guest. We took out to her, you know, I want to make sure they're treated well. And I was going to talk to the manager, and he starts talking to the woman. Next thing you know, she found out this woman's a single mom. Found out that she's having a lousy day, and she's, you know, she's going to get evicted from her house. She's going through all this trouble. Next thing you know, we're praying with her, with her and for her. And her attitude changed dramatically. What happened? I was looking, and I was judging her, thinking that she didn't care about her job. She didn't care about us. I had it all figured out. How many times do we do that? You know? But you say, well, we're supposed to bring correction. No, there's a correction that values mercy more than judgment. Correction that values mercy more than judgment. And Jesus has a lot to say about this. And I even go to the store. You know how you want to hurry up and get home and uh, the kid, take the kids to the game, whatever, and you're sitting there, you got your stuff. Okay, 10 items or less. I got two items. And there's a person in front of me that has like 20 items. Sorry. <clears throat> this is what happens all the time. You know, judging is our favorite pastime. If we're honest, but we're not, we're really good at judging people. And let me say something else about judging. I, I, most people, including myself, think we're really good judges of character, don't we? That somehow, some way, I have an ability to understand what is going on between your two earlobes in the gray matter we call the brain. And I know what's going on. And I can size a person up. They, they don't care about me. They're this, they're the other. Just because someone does something in behavior, I immediately attach a desire or I attach a motive behind it and become an expert in psychology that I can read minds. Have you noticed that? A lot of us. And, and then what happens sometimes, we find that we're right. And so we get a track record. Well, I'm really good at discerning people. I, I talk to many people. I know how to read people. Really? You really do, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. But judging makes us feel good because it puts us in a better light than others. If you're judging, guess what happens? You get behind the bench. Now you're wearing a black robe and you got the hammer in your hand and they don't. You're above them. Feels good, doesn't it, to judge somebody else. But Jesus says something extraordinary. He says in Matthew, and we'll get to it a little later on, Matthew 7, verse 1, we'll go there later. Judge not that you may not be judged. For what judgment you use, you'll be judged. And with measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. And we'll get to that a little bit later. And so the Bible says not to judge. Well, what are we supposed to do? Walk around and let people walk over us? Are we supposed to not judge our children? Are we supposed to not judge other people? Are we just supposed to walk around, oh, it's okay. I'm okay, you're okay. I won't bother you, you won't bother me. I don't want to judge anybody. Oh, we are the world. We are the people. 
Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm dating myself. That was a long time. People go, what's the way of the world? Okay, just go, don't Google it now. Okay, don't Google it now. But what's the deal? What does Jesus have to say about it? Well, I'm going to open your Bibles, please, to John chapter 8, because, you know, this is a great passage of Scripture we talked about a little bit last week. We're going to continue to talk about it this week as well in the next 13 minutes. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> in John chapter 8, verse 10 through 19... We know what happened. There was a woman that was caught in the midst of adultery. She literally was caught in the act, and the Pharisees grabbed her and dragged her and brought her at the feet of Christ and threw her down and says, what should we do with this woman? It was a test. And they were trying to get him in a catch-22 where no matter what he did, he'd get in the problem. If he said, yes, judge her, he'd be in trouble. If he says, do not, he says, let her go, she'd be in trouble. So what did he do? He wrote on the ground, and from the oldest to the, early, to the youngest left. And he looks at the woman and says, uh, where are your accusers? She's not here. Neither do I judge you. And he says something else we mentioned last week. Go and sin no more. Well, that's judgment. Well, let's continue to read this. And then this passage continues this week. We're going to look at it, okay? Uh, verse 10. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I go and sin no more. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. So he's basically saying there's light and there's darkness. So that's a part of judgment. Yes, there's a difference between judgment and having being judgmental. Then he goes on to say in verse 13, the Pharisees replied, you're making those claims about yourself. Such a testimony is not valid. Jesus told them this. These claims are valid even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you don't know this about me. Listen to this, verse 15. You judge me by human standards now, this, this, this part will blow you away. But I judge, but I do not judge anyone. Wait a minute here. Are you telling me that Jesus does not judge anyone? That's what it says, doesn't it? Okay. If Jesus judges no one, then why do we find it so necessary to judge everyone. We're going to talk about honoring God by not judging and how to judge and ascertain. Now, just pay attention. You're probably getting a little irritated right now. I want to walk out when I'm talking about this. Bear with me. You're going to see a balance in all this. But Jesus does not judge anybody. Why? Let's continue to read, all right? It's important to read. So he says them, he says the following. He says, I... Um, you judge me by human standards, but I judge no one. Verse 15. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect because, why? I am not alone. So he's basically saying here, I don't judge anybody by myself. That's key. I judge nobody by myself. Now, this is Jesus who was perfect in every capacity. You understand something here? I told you in the very beginning, he lowered himself to our standards in regards to physical life. He had a physical body. The only huge difference between Jesus and you and I is he had no sin. He had temptations to sin, but he chose not to sin. Choice he made. But the really interesting thing about Jesus is this. He had to rely on his human capacity. And he realized that in his own human capacity, he did not have the ability to look into a person's soul or their mind or to discern what was going on. In other words, in the physical form he was in, that he subjected himself as the Son of Man, he says, I dare not judge anyone by myself. Why is it we find it so necessary to judge people by ourselves? I do it, and you do it too. We just love to judge people. There was something sent just recently, and 
and, and, and someone just judged something. It was to help somebody else out, and someone took it the wrong way and thought we were being selfish. I'm like, no, we're trying to help somebody. It's amazing how people judge. Jesus does not judge. We should not judge. The key is by ourselves. What would happen? Imagine when something happens, something at work happens, or in that restaurant, for example, when the waitress was having an attitude. And I would have said, God, I'm irritated. Show me what is going on in this young lady's life. God, how should I handle this? What would happen if we paused and asked God for wisdom? Just, just as a, you know, uh, your wife comes home and goes, hmm. or the teenage come home and goes, <laughs> let me just stop there for a minute. God, what's going on with little Johnny and little Susie? God, what happened today with her? What would happen if we'd stop and say, listen, I do not have the capacity or the ability to judge nobly or correctly by myself. Because Jesus didn't do it, I'm not going to do it. What would happen if we stopped right there? I believe many of our conflicts and many of our difficulties would evaporate. You and I are so quick to judge. I thank God that I've learned as I grew up in Long Island, New York, and Wayne knows what I'm talking about. Sarcastic Quick, quick wit. And I just would, I'd cut people up and I'd see somebody and brrr, go say things. All my friends would laugh. I was, a, I was a jokester. Imagine that. In the classroom, I'd say to cut people up and sarcasm. I was really good at it. But you know what? That was so dishonoring to God because I thought I understood everybody because it, what it does is pushes everyone else down and elevates me. This is the cheap way to bring yourself up. But you also bring yourself down. He says the following. Hi. <laughs> Verse 15. You judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan, because you are judging by human standards. Human standards is satanic in its origin because without God, it's satanic. You don't have to worship a pentagram and cut chickens' heads off. But when you become humanistic and it's all about you, that's when we get ourselves in a situation. Then he says this in verse 16. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness and my Father who sent me is the other. And some of you are saying, oh, great. I know people like that. God told me to do this. God told me to, you know people like that? Uh, the God told me everything, right? God told me to wear this pink dress. God told me, some people get up in the morning, mm, God, what should I do today? Should I get out of the right side of the bed or the left side of the bed? Father, should I wear a suit today or should I wear jeans and insult people? Someone said I was wearing skinny jeans. These are not skinny jeans. My wife picked them out. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, okay? But anyhow, stop judging me, okay? My wife trusts me. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but we sit there and you say, oh, God, no, we're not talking about that. By the way, however, though, the Lord might tell you to wear something that day. Because who knows? Maybe God spoke to someone and said, uh, let me give you an example. This is, this is, imagine, imagine on a Sunday morning if S7 was here and all of a sudden I got on all fours and I was crawling below his piano. He said, the pastor's just lost it. He just, he's going insane. Let's call the paddy wagon. Let's, let's bring him to St. Mary's uh, Urgent Care. He's something wrong with him. You'd think he's nuts. Well, this pastor that I knew of did the very thing. In the middle of the sermon, he stopped the sermon. He said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I have to do this. He gets on all fours and climbs underneath there. He comes back up. He said, during the sermon, he's thinking, God, I'm not going to do that. God, this, must, this is of the devil. I, and he kept hearing it, that little voice. So he did it after the service. People are like, well, Pastor, I said, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to do it. And someone came up to him and said, no, I was praying, God, if you're real, have the pastor go underneath the piano bench. <laughs> now, if you and I were sitting there, pff, that pastor's weird. This is a weird church. I'm never coming back here again. Sometimes God might ask us to do something that seems absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous, but 
How easy is it for us to judge somebody? He says, I do nothing but the Father. They say, where's your Father? He says, well, since you don't know the Father, you don't know me. So let's just talk about, uh, there's about three, uh, about three things I'm going to mention quickly here to you today is this. We are not to judge, we need to honor God by not judging other people. Some of us have way too much confidence in our ability of being people readers. Sorry, you're not a people reader without God. You're fleshly at best. Stop having so much confidence in your ability without God. Jesus says the following in John 15, 5, which, by the way, is found in the, uh, in the book of John. That's why they call it John. John 15, 5. This is what Jesus says. Let's talk about Jesus, who's our prototype. He says this, I am the vine, what? You are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do everything by your wit and talent. What does it say? For without me, you can do nada, nothing. And when the Bible says nothing, it means nothing. Later on in the same chapter, or later on, it says in a different book, John 5, which we were just at before, it says this. My Father's working, and so am I. Verse 19. So G- verse, uh, John 5, 19. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. Listen to this. The Son can do nothing by Himself. He only does what He sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. If Jesus found it necessary to consult the Father, how much more necessary in our fallen and sinful state that we have to battle with should we consult with God before we pass judgment on other people? John 5, 22. In addition, now this will blow you away because I'm just going to counteract what I just said. In addition, the Father judges no one. Wait a minute here. Whoa, you said that Jesus... Wait, wait, let's listen. The Father judges no one. Instead, he has given the Son absolute authority to judge. Wait a minute. The Bible says, I judge nobody, and now he says that Jesus... Well, let's, let's look at the context, okay? Let's continue to read. Later on, in verse 30, it says this. This is after Jesus healed a paralytic who was laying dormant, and the Pharisees were upset because he healed on the Sabbath. Okay, he says this. By the way, he tells the paralytic, I, I heal you, and stop sinning lest something else worse happen to you. So he does bring his standards. What happens? Verse 30. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Do you see? He's allowed to judge when God is with him. And God has given them that responsibility, but that responsibility is contingent on his relationship and listening to the Father. The Father tells them what to do, and Jesus does it. The Father does not do it. Jesus does it. Do you see it? But he has complete reliance upon, how dare we, you and I, get to such a degree where we begin to look at each other and we begin to judge each other based upon our own understanding. Peter did it. No, God, don't. Don't have to suffer. Get behind me, Satan, for your heart is the thing of men, not of God. He says, I judge no one. He says in John 5, 30, he says, I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the one, the will, the one who sent me, not on my own will, not by my own will. If, if I were to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. In other words, I don't dare do this thing without God. How dare we do this thing without God? Why do you think the church sometimes, and you and I screw up so much, and just does such a horrible job sometimes in society? Because we don't do it God's way. We don't do it God's way. Verse 32, but someone else is also testifying about me. He's talking about John the Baptist. And you look at this, and back to John 5, 30, he says this, I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells 
me. Well, how do you hear from God? What about people that say, I hear from God all the time? Well, the Bible, this, is not a, 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 this is not a sermon on hearing God, but I'll tell you the quick uh, four-point series. You can just uh, preach on it real quick. You hear God by the Holy Spirit that lives in you. You hear God by the Bible. You hear the God through circumstance, and you hear God through the witness of other believers that come into contact with this, okay? And that's how you hear God. That's partially how you hear God. And so we need to make sure it does not contradict the Bible. And um, Jesus says the following in John 8, 28. He says this. So then, when you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am He. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father has taught me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do what pleases him. Are we dealing with other people in the way that pleases God? The Apostle Paul says something that I think is really important for us to realize this. He says this in Philippians 3, 3. For we, the circumcision, which is the Jewish people, who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have confidence in the flesh. No, we have no confidence in the flesh because the flesh is not competent to have confidence in. Why do we put so much confidence in what's so faulty? Why do we do that, my friends? We should not. Imagine a people, imagine you and I stopping and listening to God and asking God and relying on Him and honoring God before we get the gavel out. Apostle Paul says, though I might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he made confidence, I more so. He goes on with his, with his pedigree and his, his biography and his resume, and it's impressive. Now I want to bring you to a couple places uh, Matthew 7, a lot of scripture here this morning, but I, I just think it does a great job, so we're going to look at scripture. We believe in scripture here at this church. We believe that it is the inspired word of God, that it helps us and corrects us. Matthew 7, 1 through 3, this is what he says. Judge not that you be not be judged. That's pretty clear, is it not? For with what judgment you judge, you'll be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the spect? In your brother's eye, but not, do not consider Noah's ark in your, I'm sorry, but do not consider the plank in your own eye. Have you noticed, and I've noticed this, by the way, I've noticed people that criticize other people about something is often something they deal with themselves. I can't believe they took, how can they put themselves in that position? Because they want to be in that position, and they want to be there, and they want to exercise or lord it over people. And so they see it very well. We often see what we criticize in other people, even though it may be a different way of seeing it. What does it say? What does the Bible say? It says, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Hypocrite. Verse 5. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eyes. So before we ever dare to bring correction to somebody else, make sure you're humble first. You say, Father, is there anything in me that is, that is being judgmental? Or is there an I issue in me? I may not have trouble drinking, but maybe I have a trouble with being prideful. Or maybe I have a trouble with being judgmental. God, is there anything in me? Ask God first. God, is there anything in me? Then after you've humbled yourself, ask God, how can I redemptively help this person? You see, if there's not redemption in correction, it's demonic. Then, Jesus says in the same chapter, skipping ahead to verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Wait a minute here. He's talking about judging, is he not? Let's continue to read. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. Yes, we are to be discerning. But if we don't get to this point without first going to God and saying, hey God, is there something in my own life 
Before I point the finger, as you heard it growing up, there's four coming back at you. So I go like this. <laughs> First, God, is there anything in me? First, God, check my heart. God, am I being judgmental? Ask God first. Then humble yourself. Then you'll be able to help somebody else out and discern what's happening. But we do it not by ourselves. All by my... No, you're not going to be by yourself in that, okay? Okay, that's the first. Don't honor ourselves. The second point, real quick, is this. Honor God by not even judging yourself. Huh? Yeah. Don't judge yourself. I'm going to say something that might bother you for a few seconds. I don't believe in introspection. Every time I introspect, it's fruitless and causes me grief and problems. When I look within, look within. Sounds real Star Wars-y, doesn't it? Look within. Well, when I look within, guess what happens? I'm looking within by myself. And there's about three or four things that can happen. Number one, I can think, well, I'm pretty good, and get arrogant. Number two, second thing that can happen is, man, I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. Okay? Then I beat myself down, or I can be like, hey, I'm not a bad person. And what, what's the problem with introspection? You're judging yourself without who? Okay, and what, is, what does God say? What does the Bible say? Jesus says what? I judge nobody, including yourself. Many of us judge ourselves by ourselves, and it causes great problems. It causes arrogance. It causes depression. It causes all. I, I, I have found. And so I stopped. I stopped judging myself. It doesn't work very good. Instead, I want to do what the psalmist does. Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along paths of everlasting life. My friends, if you're going to go look in, don't go without the Holy Spirit. Or you'll get yourself in the trouble. Well, I'm going to analyze how service went today. Well, I should have had this. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. And my wife and I are so good at this. I thank God for Sandra. She's amazing. She's such a godly woman, the most godly woman I know. And I shouldn't say that sincerely. She's way beyond her years. And I'll be moaning, oh, I can't believe. Well, did, you ask, did you ask God? <laughs> and then she'll get upset. I said, did you ask God? So we're really good for each other. And I have learned, and I, I, I'm so much slower. People sometimes think, well, he never judges anybody. Okay. Because I realize, apart from God, I'm a wreck. I'm a hot mess, and so are you. We've got to rely on God. Don't even introspect on your own without God with you. And then the third thing is this. We are to honor God by judging how we're to live. James 4.13 says the following. Look here. You who say, tomorrow, I'm going to go to this university. I'm going to go to a certain town, and I will stay here a year. We will do business there and make a profit. Is there anything wrong with those things? No. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like a morning fog. It is here for a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to do, we will live and do that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is spiritual. I'm sorry, it's evil. You're being judgmental. You should have listened to what I had to say. You see that? It doesn't mean we walk around if the Lord wills. No, but I want to go to this school. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a lawyer. I want to start my own business. I want to do this. I, at this stage of my life, I should be doing this. I should be making this. I should have this and the other. She should be treating me. He should be treating me. They should be treating me. I should be. I should be. I, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the other. Shut up. And put, shut up and put up and say, God, what do you want me to do? Jesus said, I do nothing unless he shows me. So I want to encourage you today not to judge other people. All right? Don't judge other people. That's not our job. Don't be judging yourself. 
without God introspecting. Don't do introspection. Do God inspection. And don't make plans on your own without involving God. You know, uh, you might have heard of uh, Anne Grant Watts. She's an amazing woman of God. Just Abraham, Abraham. It's, uh, um, what's his name? Billy Graham. <laughs> Billy Graham's daughter. And she's an author and a speaker and a tremendous woman of God. And she mentioned that when she was a, uh, uh, a teenager, she was irresponsible with a car. She was driving fast on a country road. She ended up hitting the neighbor's car. And she went back home and she tried to avoid her father the best she could. She couldn't stand it anymore. She went to her father and said, Dad, I hit Mrs such and such car, I Jesus, honey, I know that already. She already called me. I was just waiting for you to come to me. Some of you think God doesn't know what's going on. God's waiting for you to come to him. He doesn't want to judge you. He wants to bless you. Right now is a time of redemption. John 3, 16. Tim Tebow's verse what it says, John 3, 16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Listen to this. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world. Listen. If our judgment doesn't have redemption, it's not of God. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. And all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. For their fear, their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants them. Listen. This, there is a time coming where judgment will come. Right now is a time of grace. Right now, the train has not left the station. The ship has not yet sailed, but it might sail. Pastor Brian Cox of GT Church, another part of our fellowship, was riding a motorcycle last Sunday. A man that I look up to greatly. He's a, a great church. Been there for 30 years. I look at guys that have been someplace a long time that are invested in the community because that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be like. I really a church of over 3,000. Great guy. Great guy. Met him. Wonderful man. He's driving his Harley with his wife. The teenager was in the other lane. I don't know what the teenager was doing, but it ended up going in his lane, head-on collision. Wife dead. His wife just got ordained. Dead. His leg is amputated, right leg amputated. He is in a medically conduced coma. He's coming out of it. You do not know when your time is. His wife was ready. Now, I don't have time to get into the why of this. I don't know. But I do know this. Your train might leave the station. You don't know when your time is up. Are you ready to meet God? If you're not ready to meet God, there is judgment coming. But right now is a time of grace. Right now is a time to make it right. Will you examine yourself? Ask God, God, do I really know you? Have I given my life to you? Let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask right now, Father, if there's anyone here right now that has never completely surrendered to you or they had in the past and they've done their own thing again. And they're recognizing today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of new beginnings. So I'm going to pray a prayer right now with every head bowed. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. And if you mean it from your heart, it is the beginning of being secure in Christ and knowing where you'll go. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you that you paid the price for all of my sins. I ask you now to forgive me of all of my sins, both known and unknown. I receive your forgiveness. I am now forgiven. And this day I declare that my life is no longer my own. I hand over the deed. I hand over the keys. I declare this morning that you are God and I am not. 
I hand my life over to you and give you control today. I ask you by your power that you would give me the strength to walk in a path that is pleasing and right to you in Jesus' name. Amen. With every head bowed, if anyone prayed that prayer today, just, when you, just so I know a little better, anyone prayed that prayer today, just a quick show of hands. Anyone this morning said, Pastor, I pray, thank you. Anybody else this morning? Okay. Now let's have another prayer this morning. And that prayer is this. How about we decide no longer to be judgmental? How about we decide from this point forward no longer to be like Jesus who says, I judge nobody. My judgment comes from God. I am with God. Let's pray right now. Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we choose this day to stop judging other people, stop judging ourselves, and stop judging our direction and choose to give you authority and the last word in all that we do. Forgive us, God, for being judgmental, and we choose to stay forward with your help to walk in a path that is reliant upon you. We want to honor you with our hearts, our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for being attentive this morning. I'm going to ask that the prayer team make their way up. If you need prayer for anything at all, otherwise, just close this one last song. Go ahead. Amen. Let's honor God today and all that we do and say amen. God bless you guys. You're dismissed. And if you want prayer, I'm going to ask that they put the music. And if you need prayer for anything at all, we want to pray for you. God bless you. Wow. Hey, man. Oops. We're just waiting.